The book, All Yesterdays, intended to show us visions of plausible soft tissues the ancient dinosaurs touted. There was never a single part in that book that specified that what they were doing was factual reality, merely paleoartistic experiments to push the boundaries of how we reconstruct the Saurians altogether. Judging by the amount of paleo media that has come out after that book, I think it succeeded. A brand new paleoart meme, intentionally created and spread by world-renowned RJ Palmer, Joshua Knup, and friends, posits a new question on how we may be able to reconstruct the squishy bits of the dinos. Did dinosaurs have fleshy earlobes? When it comes to reconstructing extinct life, some liberties have to be taken. With that said, new advances in technology and techniques, plus new fossil finds, have blown open the doors, so to speak, on the extent to which we can or should reconstruct the soft tissues of dinosaurs and other extinct animals. Plenty of well-preserved specimens of dinosaurs have been found that preserve extravagant filaments, feathers, wattles, and crests. Plenty of others even preserve muscles, carrots and claws, beaks, quills, and tongue bones. Then, if we take our attention to the world of the living dinosaurs, the birds, we will see an extremely complex and diverse array of feather types, colors, textures, lengths, shapes, fleshy combs, wattles, wrinkled ball sack things, little worm stashes, inflatable boobies attached to the throat sacks, head crests, neck wattles, inflatable neck balloons, and so many more that I could go on for five minutes. If there is such a high diversity in this one group of highly derived theropod dinosaurs, then why would anyone in their right minds think an even bigger diversity in visual structures did not splatter the heads, necks, chests, and bodies of the other dinosaurs? The pterosaurs? The weirdo archosaurs that were more like birds than crocs or even lizards? All of this was the basis for the 2012 book All Yesterdays by Dr. Darren Nash, John Conway, and CM Kozman. I have a two-part series thoroughly exploring this book, so if you want to explore that, go watch those videos. It is chock full of hypothetical ways of reconstructing dinosaurs and pterosaurs using educated inferences based on the known skeletal anatomy of the subject, of the art, and known anatomy of modern relatives. There's also a sequel book called All Your Yesterdays that included lightly speculative reconstructions by the paleo art community with even more ideas. I'll eventually cover that one here too. The ultimate payoff from this book has been an opening up and loosening of the reins towards paleo art. Not that people before the book were literally restricted to only reconstruct exactly what we know about the soft tissues of dinosaurs from the bones alone, and there are plenty of people who were doing crazy stuff in the 90s, 80s, and even further back. But it certainly propelled a lot of young paleoartists into flexing their speculative muscles lubricated with the oil that is social media and digital art. I will add that another ultimate payoff for this book was Apple TV Plus's prehistoric planet as it takes every major point made in All Yesterdays and puts it into practice. A meme is an idea, behavior, or style that spreads by means of imitation from person to person within a culture and often carries symbolic meaning representing a particular phenomenon or theme. The term is older than the internet and was first coined as an analogous way to describe culture in an evolutionary context. It explains how certain aspects of cultures evolve. Paleo art, though rooted in science, is also rooted in art, and art is culture. As such, like with any other piece of art, paleo art memes have sprouted up ever since the first person drew an extinct critter. Some notable ones are this look for Forus Rockus the giraffe-like, gray, running Barosaurus, and Stegosaurus as a uniquely undinosaurian, arc-backed Quasimodo lizard with giant frilly plates, a sharp eagle-like beak, and tortoise feet. Now, a brand new paleoart meme has just been started, but intentionally this time, and we got to watch it unfold in all its cursed glory over the last few days of July and into August. Dinosaur earlobes.
So, shocker, dinosaurs have ears. I won't get into the nitty gritty of the anatomical structures within the ears, as they are not super different from modern archosaurs. However, the outside of the ears may have been quite unusual. The vast majority of modern dinosaurs and their cousins, birds and crocs, just have a gaping hole for an external ear. The crocs have a protective fleshy covering that covers their ear holes, while plenty of birds have protective feathers that cover theirs, so you don't see them. The feathers that cover the holes are called ear coverts and are made of barbless feathers so sound can travel through them. Some birds have tufts of feathers that visually mimic the soft tissues of many mammal ears, but they're just for show. Now we come to the weirdos. Some birds, mostly those that have wattles, combs, crests, and other weirdly textured bare skin on the necks, chests, and faces, also have a stretch of soft tissue in the vicinity of the ear hole. Now, these things are referred to as ear lobes, but neither function as they do in mammals nor are evolutionarily related to them. Ear lobes, as in the lobey bits that we humans have, are unique to us. They are essentially biologically useless, but have a large network of blood vessels running through them, so some researchers hypothesize that they may serve to help warm our ears, or function specifically as an erogenous zone, which I can definitely see. They were probably also present in our close ancestors and cousins. Our closest relatives today sort of have earlobes, though they definitely lean more towards a non-lobed look. The fleshy bits on the ears of other mammals aren't really lobes and are part of the structure anatomically referred to as the auricula, if in humans, and pinnae, if in non-human animals. The auricula and pinnae do different things in different animals, but function mostly to funnel sounds towards the hole. Bigger the funnel, the more sound you hear. Birds do not have any of these sorts of structures, but still have some badass hearing abilities. But now we come to the bird earlobe. Some birds, mostly chickens, have a bit of wattly soft tissue hanging down just below the ear hole. This is called the earlobe, despite not really being an earlobe, nor functioning as ours do. A funny thing about the lobes in chickens is that they provide a visual indicator as to what color egg the chicken will lay. White lobe means a white egg, and any other color means brown. The roosters are a tad different, with some sporting huge floppy extensions of this non-lobe earlobe tissue. On top of that, they have a feathery covering over their ears, as in other birds, unlike the hens. The roosters also have a special flap or slit on the inside of the ear that closes when they open their mouths to scream, so they don't rupture their ears. They can crow at a whopping 142 decibels. Non-avian dinosaurs likely had a similar gaping hole ear arrangement as in modern dinosaurs, with plenty also probably having similar feathers to cover them. That being said, some paleoartists couldn't help themselves but experiment with sizes and shapes of fleshy ear wattles. And now we have a mini paleoart trend of the week, dino earlobes. Some are more realistic than others, and this whole thing was never meant to be taken super seriously as they are super rare in birds and are of course not really lobes. Here we see a brightly colored blue display in some large allosaur by Petit Paleoartis rabbit ear-like floppy ones in a Camarasaurus by Lucas Petrin, bulging wattles in a Majungasaurus by Yoshio Kanopa, the one that started the trend, a Tyrannosaurus with moderately sized, rather plausible flaps by R.J. Palmer, little scrunkly ones on a stylized Majungasaurus by Bornulhu, ones reminiscent of a type of stork on a con by Brennan Stockermans, Another Majungasaurus with a pair of floppers by a fancy dinosaur. And then a few that are intentionally jokey, Jar Jar Binks fins on an Edmontosaurus by Digital Duck or Max Bellomio. A pair of clackers or knockers on a Tyrannosaur with added cursed sound effects by Steve Mob Cannon. There's this Carcharodontosaur with blurple earlobes by Fishboy. This slinky raptor with red strips by Lynn Joyce. These two sketches of a Spinosaur and a Tyrannosaur by Fiasco Gabe. This assortment of dinosaurs with variously cartoony ears by Jim Matsunai. This very blue Sinotyrannus by M. the Turkey. And finally, a Bajadasaurus with almost mammalian lobes by Oribeck. 
The thing about roosters and their ear protection may mean that the loudest non-avian dinosaurs would have been the most likely to have some sort of ear-like tissues for protection. But that's all speculation. Wonder what the next paleo trend will be. Stay tuned. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, hit the bell icon for updates, like this video, and drop a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my elephant tier patrons Arda Bayer, Biotiverse, Christoph Hubbinger, Dinosaur, Isaiah Garza, PA Brew News, Ray, Rudy Redgrave, Smiling Walrus. And another thanks to my Tyrannosaurus tier patrons Iberospinus, Iron Bladesman, Swaffles is Weird, Teeny Dragator, The Dogman.